Hey guys, it's Mrs. Chappie. Welcome to our very last Monuments of Freedom class. I had planned on talking, continuing to talk, I guess I should say, about um, war memorials as monuments to people who sacrificed for our country. And last week we talked about the World War II um, memorial and we talked a little bit about the Iwo Jima memorial. And I was gonna continue on that theme today, but then I had an idea. You guys are my kids that love building things. That's why you took this class. And so this has been really hard on you to have to do stuff at home that I don't have the materials to give you. And I felt so, so bad about that. And then I had an idea. I have a monument that we can build um, that I actually have the materials in my house for. So if you want to build this and you need the materials, if you don't have them at home, uh, have your mom email me and I will drop them off in a bag on your front porch so you could build this at your house. I'm super excited because one of my big problems with this class was is I didn't have the materials and all the stores are closed and how could I get stuff to you? And so we've had to kind of change it to this whole electronic format, which hasn't been the best, but I appreciate you guys hanging in there with it. But this is what I want you guys to make this week. Now, I was thinking about monuments, which is strange. I think about these things when I have spare time. And while we were going to talk about the war memorials, I kept thinking about the most famous monument of all in our country. Now, if you asked most people, okay, what, what name a monument in the United States, most people would come up with this one. Ta-da. What is this? Do you guys recognize this? I'm hoping you recognize this. This is the Washington Monument. And I have, I'm gonna teach you a little bit about the history and the facts about this. But this is the project you can actually make at home. So this, the monument part, which I will tell you all about in a, in a minute, is um, cut out on a, from a piece of paper that I have linked for your parents. The knoll that it's on, and we'll talk about this knoll, it's actually artificially made, it's not like that naturally in DC, is just a bowl. And I have enough bowls for everyone. If, if you want one, I can drop it by your house. On top of it, it's on a grassy knoll made of grass, and you can cover your bowl, look at this, with um, uh, tissue paper, which again, I already have in my house. It was like, what do I have in my house? And I, so I have tissue paper, I have bowls, and then we'll talk about it. It's surrounded by flags. It actually has 50 flags around it, one representing each state. And I am the proud owner of lots of flags. So you guys can make a monument of freedom in your house. So I'm really excited. I hope somebody makes it um, and that you send me a picture of it. And if you need the materials, have your mom email me or your dad or whoever, and I will totally drop these off for you wherever you are. Um, just leave them on your porch so we have our social distancing and everything. But I'm excited to finally, it's taken me weeks to come up with a project that um, I have the materials for or you may have the materials for. You can make flags. Um, you could use construction paper, color paper, put this on a bowl. This would be a super easy project um, for you to do at home and fun. And it's kind of cool. In fact, I might add it to my overly full things that I have in my office. There we go. We'll let it sit right there in our background. So because we switched the focus from a memorial to this monument, the Washington Monument, I get to teach you some fun facts about the Washington Monument. Before I do that, uh, I grabbed my scrapbook. I am a, if you don't know this about me, I am a huge scrapbooker. I have scrapbooks for everything that my family does. And last summer, I went to Washington, D.C. I've told you guys a lot about my kiddo, John Lewis. John Lewis was living in Washington, D.C. and working in the Capitol last year as part of his schooling. He is a political science um, major and is now in law school and loves government and all that kind of stuff. Go figure, right? And while he was living there, I went and visited him. And in my scrapbook, I did this page that is entirely about the Washington Monument because everywhere you are in Washington, you can see this monument. So these pictures right here are from the 
uh, Lincoln Memorial. This right here is actually the knoll that we'll talk about in a little bit. Over here, you see everywhere I, everywhere I was, I kept taking pictures of the Washington Monument. This is actually from the Jefferson Memorial. Um, you can see the Washington Monument. It's everywhere you go. That's actually the president, fun fact. He had just left the White House and flew over the Washington Memorial. So everywhere you look, you see this Washington Monument. So I thought it's the perfect monument to talk about in this class and I got to show off my little scrapbook. So I will share my screen, which is what I do, and I'm also gonna link some videos um, for you to learn a little bit more about the Washington Monument. And here we go. Super excited about this. I'm gonna put myself in the corner so that I can talk to y'all. There you go. So here we are, the Washington Monument. Um, I will give you all kinds of fun and useless facts about it that maybe you might find interesting or be like, okay, I didn't know that, but now I know that. Um, the Washington Monument, it's a hundred and, or no, it's not a hundred, it's 555 feet tall. It is currently the tallest building in Washington, D.C. Like I said, you can see it from everywhere. This would be the angle from the World War II Memorial. Well, actually, right, no, it's not. This is looking back at the Washington Monument from the Lincoln Memorial because right here is the World War II Memorial. So it's, I thought, I thought we were looking at a different angle. So over here is that memorial we talked about last week. So this is looking towards the Lincoln Memorial, which would be going west. And there currently is a law in Washington, D.C. that no other building um, is allowed to be taller than it. So it is the tallest thing. So I want you to look real carefully where I'm pointing with my um, cursor. You see those two dots right there? Those are windows. And in a little bit, I'm going to show you the inside of the um, monument so you can see how big those windows are. So. <laughs> the actual designs of a monument to George Washington began when he was still alive. You can't underestimate how much the country just adored and loved George Washington. And so there were all kinds of different designs for a monument for him. Um, one of the first ideas was to put a giant statue of him on a horse. Fun fact, George Washington's horse's name was Nelson. Don't know why I threw that in there. Um, but the and when the plans for the Capitol were first laid out, they actually had included about where the monument is now to put this statue of George Washington. That didn't happen, and they moved on to another design. This is like a preliminary design. Whoops! Of what hit the Washington Monument would look like. It obviously ended up not looking at all like that. Um, at this point in history in the late 1700s, early 1800s, when our country was founded and all these great buildings were being designed, there was this obsession with Egyptian artifacts and architecture and everything. In fact, at one point, they almost built an entire pyramid in Washington, DC. They didn't do that. Um, but that's why we see obelisks all over the place. In fact, this obelisk, this tall part, uh, that looks like it came out of Egypt is the tallest um, stone obelisk in the world. So when the um, cornerstone was laid to build it, this is an illustration of that laying of the cornerstone, the same exact tool was used to lay the cornerstone of the Washington Monument in the year was 1848 that George Washington had used to lay the cornerstone of the Capitol. Do you remember I showed you some pictures in one of our other videos of George Washington laying that cornerstone of the United States Capitol? So fun fact, the same tro uh, troll, the stone, um, stone workers use it to like spread cement was used in this ceremony as was used in that. So they started building this monument to George Washington, and it actually got halfway done and then sat there for 25 years, um, kind of half 
halfway up like this. And you can see this is a photograph and there's some other buildings around. They use this like as an area to slaughter cows. They um, did all kinds of stuff there. They ran out of money basically to build the monument. And so it's got stopped there. And then the Civil War came about and that slowed it down and it was stopped during the Civil War as well. So for 25 years, which is a long time if you think about it, um, it just sat halfway done like this. So this is what it looked like in Washington, uh, the DC for about 25 years. It was just sitting there halfway done like that. Um, one of the things we'll talk about in the middle is they have these memorial stones that are on the inside of it. I'll show you some pictures in just a second. And one of the stones came from the Pope and some people weren't happy about that because they didn't like Catholics and that stone disappeared and someone threw it in the Potomac River and all kinds of issues happened <laughs> during this 25 um, year period. It was kind of a mess. Here's a photograph. This photograph is actually on display at the Washington um, uh, monument that it's inside. And this, this photograph's interesting because if you look right here in the background, can you guys see that? There it is, halfway built. And these would be Union soldiers during the Civil War. So, um, inside the Washington Monument, there is an elevator. Now, this elevator uh, was put in originally, and it um, originally only men were allowed to go up this elevator because it was thought to be too unsafe for the ladies and the and the children. So only men could go in it. And the original elevator would take 20 minutes to go from the bottom to the top craziness and meanwhile the because remember it's 555 feet so it'd take 20 minutes to get all the way up to the top in the elevator but the women and children would have to walk up the stairs and the stairs were 897 steps to get to the top um the elevator we'll talk about in a minute there was an earthquake all kinds of stuff happened and anyways the the elevator that's there is brand new and it just opened in September, just this last September when we started classes is when the elevators first worked. And now the elevator can get from the bottom to the top in 70 seconds. It's like super fast. It's, it's the equivalent of going up 51 stories tall. So that's how tall it would be, like a 51 story tall building in this elevator will get you up there that fast. Um, so I wanted you to see a picture of that. Now, if you take that elevator all the way to the top, you can see for 25 or 30 miles, Different. some people say 30 miles, some people say 25 miles, and you're looking out, remember I said I wanted to talk to you about that, that little teeny window there. So you see, it looks like it was just a dot, but you can see kind of a person there to get an idea. And if you look one way, you see the Capitol, you look the other way, you see the Lincoln Memorial. These right here are the Smithsonian's. If you've heard of Smithsonian museums, um, they're along here. This is what we call the mall. When I was your age, I used to think there was actually stores on the mall. It's grass, it's called the Capitol Mall. It's this grass area right there. Um, Walking up there, there are stairs that are metal that go around like that until there are stone parts of it. So if um, you were one of these women or children back in the day um, and you walked, it could take forever. The, there's a, actually is a world record. The fastest person anyone has ever gone up these stairs um, happened in the year 2005 and it took someone 6.5 seven minutes to go up all 897 steps. So when the um, Lincoln Mem or the Washington Memorial was built, the Washington Monument was built, it's a memorial to him, but it is a monument. Um, it was the tallest structure in the entire world for about five years until this thing was built. You guys recognize what that is? That's the Eiffel Tower. Um, and so once the Eiffel Tower was built, 
uh, it, it was no longer the tallest. The Eiffel Tower built for a World's Fair was taller. So on the inside of the, the monument, um, where if you go up the staircase, the inside of it is lined with these stones. They're called memorial stones, and they could and they were submitted by cities and states um, to be included in it. Like you can see, this says Arizona. You can see that it says Minnesota in Texas, 1845. Often they were made out of materials from that state, um, so it would be a special rock or a special um, iron or ore or something from that particular the particular area. And there's a total of 193 of these inside. Um, if you go up the elevator, there's uh, glass covering all of this and there's a kind of uh, like a window in the elevator. So you can actually see this on the inside of that, of the um, monument because it's like a huge historical thing like that. At the very tippy top, there is this priceless, uh, it's called a, um, what is it called? Uh, um, capstone. I'm like, what is it called? The very tippy top is called a capstone. And it served kind of a dual function as a um, lightning rod. In fact, it got kind of melted down a little. You can see historic pictures but it was made entirely out of aluminum, which at the time was like the most precious thing available. It was like more valuable than making it out of silver. So it was super, super expensive. And at the time it also was the, um, the largest solid piece of aluminum in the world. And it's carved on it. I don't know, can you guys see how there's carvings around it? On one side, there's the Latin words um, uh, laus deo, that means uh, praise be to God. There's also the date of the Declaration of Independence on there. There's also the date that the cornerstone was laid for the entire monument is on there. They went and added to that specific lightning rods I'm gonna show you in a minute because <laughs> being this tall thing, it routinely got hit by lightning. In fact, today, whenever there's a storm, it could be hit multiple times in every storm. So it's very common for it to be hit by lightning. So they added these, um, I think they're brass, um, lightning rods around this capstone there. And you can see right here how they've all melted down so they would get hit by lightning, hit by lightning, hit by lightning, and they get all melted and turned like that. So they have to be replaced. This is kind of a cool, cool view looking at it, I think, uh, from the top to kind of get an idea what it looks like. All around this, it's circled by flags. Remember, we, I showed you, oops, where's my little thing? All the flags that go around it. There's 50 of them, one for each state um, there. The walls on this are all 15 feet thick. Um, and the bottom of this is about 55 feet wide. Let's see what other things. So here are the flags. I wanted you to kind of, this is a bad picture. I wanted you to see the flags going around like that there. Um, this entire obelisk here, the, the monument, was kind of built up, up onto a hill. I don't have a really good picture of it, but that's why we did it. I made it like this because it's kind of like on a knoll. It's a little bit taller than um, the land around it because they built it down into the, the, the footings of it, down into the earth so that it would be solid and strong and permanent. And it's a good thing that they did that because there was an earthquake. Um, the earthquake happened in, let's see, what year? I think I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget. Um, in 2011, there was an earthquake that actually cracked um, the 
monument. It, um, there were like something like, I can't remember, like 187 cracks in it or something. Some people said that it made the tower lean. It actually didn't, but the earthquake was huge. It was a 5.8 magnitude earthquake. This picture was on the cover of a lot of magazines and newspapers when it happened. These are people looking over every inch of it, looking for um, cracks they and had to inspect it all and they actually ended up shutting it down and repairing it and it was closed for years and years and then after it reopened they continued to have problems with it the elevator didn't work well and it closed again in fact last summer when I was there it was still closed I took my son there when he was in eighth grade and it was closed um, so it's been closed a lot of its time um, recently it just finally opened in september when classes started which is a bummer because it closed again in march because of the pandemic so now it's once again closed um other other facts about it there once was a protester who threatened to blow it up here if you look at this can you guys see this right here can you see that line can you see the line there this is because this is where it stopped for those 25 years during the when they ran out of money in the period in the Civil War where it stopped and then they had to build it up again. So you can, if you go, it's kind of two-toned <laughs> because um, it was built in different eras from stone from different places. Uh, let's see. That elevator that goes on the inside can only take 55 people at a time so there can only be about a half a million people that can actually go up here uh, per year. So being able to go to the top of it is kind of a very special treat, especially because it's closed so often, it's closed again now. It's actually free to go up there, or at least it used to be, I think it still is. You have to get tickets from the National Park Service and you get them on the same day. Down here, they added this, um, uh, can you see right down there they added that little entry which is now they screen people you have to go through a metal detector and all that kind of such after 9-11 they added that to it so there are some fun facts about the Washington Monument an opportunity for you guys to actually make a project I'm super excited about that um that's about all that I have to say about the Washington Monument uh it is a monument of freedom. There was talk at one point, you know, when they were going to build that, um, the columns and all the entry way around the bottom of it, of maybe putting, burying George Washington there. They keep talking about burying them all over the place, right? They were going to put them in the Capitol and then maybe there. And of course, none of that happened. He was very, very clear. He said, I want to be buried on my beloved Mount Vernon. So if you ever go to Virginia, you can actually see George Washington where he's buried at his house. Uh, so that's all that I have to say about that. Thank you guys so much for hanging with me. This has been an interesting semester, one that we will never forget, that will be part of history. And I hope you learned a little bit of history. Oops, gotta hold it up one more time, a little bit of history while we're making history in the pandemic. So have a great time um, doing the project. Send me a picture. Stay safe, stay inside, and I look forward to seeing you as soon as we have permission to have our great picnic. Bye.